Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for St. John's, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and then he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm number 62, verses 6 through 14. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. The epistle for today is 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. A dramatic saying from Jesus in this passage from the Gospel according to Mark, 
If we put it in terms of the King James language, it's follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And we hear therefore of the call of four of his disciples, the fishermen who left their nets and followed him and went on into the world with him and witnessed his crucifixion and shared his last days and were present at his resurrection. And then at least according to early Christian legend, they scattered to the far corners of the earth to proclaim the coming of the kingdom of God. Uh, there's also someone else mentioned in this story, and that is Zebedee, the father of James and John. Now, he's not exactly one of the most prominent characters in the New Testament. As far as I know, he's mentioned only in this story. But uh, let's use our imagination a little bit. So, there you are with your two sons and the hired men and your mending nets, perhaps you have them spread out onto the beach to see where repairs need to be made. And along comes this fellow and he just points at your boys and says, follow me. And off they go. And with them are Peter and Andrew who were perhaps from the fishing boat at the next dock. And so there you are, Zebedee, left without your two sons who have been an important part of your fishing business. What do you do? Hey boys, where are you going? These nets aren't going to mend themselves. Well, so Zebedee appears and then disappears from the biblical narrative. We don't hear any great stories about his mighty works as an apostle or as a missionary to distant places as the gospel spread throughout the world. We're just left with this old man waiting by his boat, mending his nets. And what is he going to do? We're told he's left with the hired men. So I suppose he turns to them and says, well, we better get back to work. And so they mend the nets. And the next morning, perhaps, they go out for a catch of fish and they take them to the market. And perhaps they do that the next day and the next. And uh, maybe there'll be a pause on Saturday for a day of Sabbath and attendance at the synagogue, but then they go back to work, pushing the boat out, hoisting the sail, perhaps manning the oars, hauling in the nets. Not as perhaps engaging as the stories of the apostles themselves, but still they're doing a necessary service. They're feeding people. They are working hard by the labor of their hands and their minds. And that, too, is a ministry. You know, we can look at our own day-to-day -day work as either just a job to pick up a paycheck, or we can look at it as an opportunity for serving God. I think of my brother-in-law, who is a physician, and... Um, I would have to say of David that he's not just a doctor, he is a healer. The way he speaks about his patients and his concern for them and how he follows their lives and their careers for many, many years. He started off even before he went to medical school. He spent several months as a medical missionary in Liberia. So this is someone whose heart is given to his profession. Not true, perhaps, of every single physician in the world. You know, I'm sure there are some doctors who are healers like my brother-in-law David, and some doctors who are just glad to be able to make the payments on their new Mercedes, and that's all that it means to them. St. Benedict chose as the motto of the monastic order that he founded in the 6th century, Ora et Labora, pray and work. And it was the custom in Benedictine monasteries that everyone have some sort of work that they did in addition to their common life of prayer as monks together. Uh, what work you had kind of depended on what your abilities and skills and background and education might be. Uh, perhaps if you were an artist, you might work on the beautiful illuminated manuscripts that came out of the monasteries of the Middle Ages. 
If you had been a peasant before you were professed as a monk, maybe you would be taking care of the sheep or tilling the fields. If you were a person of great background and education in theology, perhaps you would be writing works that reflected on the meaning of God. But it was a balanced life. It was prayer and work. So that is my hope for all of us, that we can find the ways in our daily work that we are ministering in the name of God. If you're a teacher, think of the blessing that you can give those children that sit before you day by day in the name of God. If you are in retail business, you are supplying some important materials to our community, and that can be a blessing in the name of God. Um, if you are in the military or a member of law enforcement, you are protecting the community, and that can be a blessing in the name of God. So let's stand there next to old Zebedee for a few minutes as he sees his sons disappear over the horizon with this strange rabbi who has come and called them into service. And he turns back and perhaps he kneels down and finds a torn place in his fishnet and he mends it because that too is a blessing in the name of God. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. <clears throat> we pray especially for our ministers and churches. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Holson, our bishop, for Edward, Robert, Wallace, and Stephen, bishops retired, for Michael, Bishop of Uruguay, for our priest John, for our deacon James, for our clergy retired Dwight, Jack, and Kay, and for our lay ministers Olivia, Emma, Catherine, and Mary. For Joe, our president, Kamala, our vice president, Kevin, our governor, Bria, our mayor, for the leaders of nations and for all in authority, let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on St. John's and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that way we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Bless all, all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind, body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for those who are ill or recovering. JL, Mary, Leo, Chad, Gage, BB, Stephanie, Jason, Phil, Claire, Sarah, Betsy, Evelyn, Barb, James, Jimmy, Jane, Ben, Zach, Rosalia, Paul, Carmel, Patrick, Lindy, Chip, Donna, Sharon, Emily, Helen, Lynn, Rudy, Nancy, R.C., and Anna. We pray for those in nursing care, Mike, Lavinia, Lori, Ina, Kay, and Thelma. We pray for all members of the armed forces, especially Heath, Matthew, Brock, Stephen, Tyler, Greg, Brandon, Lane, Riley, Brooklyn, David, and Gianna. We pray for those in need, sorrow, or adversity, or other special circumstances. 
all those impacted by the COVID-19 virus, the Terry family, Allison, Mary, Shane, Betty Ruth, Sydney, the Ross family, and Jeannie. We command to your mercy, commend to your mercy all the departed that your will for them may be fulfilled and pray that we share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for those that have died, Diane and Robert. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We offer special thanksgivings for, in celebration of Bill McCurdy's birthday, for our new president, Joe Biden, and for his administration, for peace and understanding among all people. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. <laughs>